Hey Keys Mods fans, this is David Fine. Today guys, we're going to be talking about breeding butterfly caterpillars. And one of the things that uh, you have to consider when you're gonna be breeding butterflies is what size containers are you gonna use for your, your, your eggs, your small caterpillars, your large caterpillars. Guys, I'm gonna give you some ideas on things to think about when choosing a container for breeding butterflies. Check this out. Okay guys, so. Here we've got a lot of things going on. I'm raising um, some some tiger moth caterpillars. We've got, they're already pupating in here. I've got some fuzzy caterpillars going on in there. Um, I've got more tiger, different tiger caterpillars in here. Check these guys out. Pretty cool. Really cool stuff. All right. I've also got, um, I've got some eggs. This is, these are eggs from the question mark butterfly. And I'm gonna try and zoom in real quick and show you. They are, they're supposed to be green. They're starting to turn black, which means that they are going to start hatching. And I'll bet this is a little stem of plant that I put in to give the caterpillars once they hatch. I'll bet, I'll bet, I'll bet. If we were to open this up, we are gonna find Question mark hatches, yay, they're hatching. Okay, those are baby question mark butterflies, guys. Pretty cool, all right? So I'm gonna show you um, some ideas here. Um, but we also have, we've got a few more things. Let me do a little show and tell real quick, guys. So we also have, we are breeding. This is a container full of tawny emperor caterpillars. That's right, tawny emperor butterfly caterpillars. There's a bunch of them in here and we are going to need to upgrade this because there are 100% way too many caterpillars in this container uh, for this little tiny cup. Um, the egg cluster hatched, the caterpillars are feeding and they're pooping and we are gonna to need to change that out. So there's a lot of things going on here, guys. And one of the things I wanted to do was go over with you guys some of the things to think about when choosing the proper size container for breeding your butterflies. So the first thing, when you're getting eggs, here's what you do. You want a controlled environment. So I use these little four ounce cups that have these little lids that snap on, okay? And here we have eggs of the Tawny Emperor. That's an egg cluster of the Tawny Emperor. There's an egg cluster of the Tawny Emperor. And one of the things that you wanna avoid when you have egg clusters, you don't wanna have any extra humidity because the humidity can cause fungus and fungus can cause your eggs to get sick and die. So because these eggs are beginning to color up, you see how they're starting to turn color. That means that the eggs are probably gonna to hatch tomorrow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a leaf of their larval host plant, hackberry. I'm gonna add a leaf into this cup probably tonight. And it's gonna look probably a little bit more like this um, tomorrow. So when the caterpillars hatch, they have something, they have fresh food to eat and they can crawl right up onto their plant and start eating without any hesitation. So these are some healthy little question mark caterpillars. I'm gonna do the same thing for my Tony Emperors. I'm gonna add some food. But one of the things you gotta do is now that these guys have hatched, you gotta upgrade them. And so one of the, the what we do when we upgrade our hatches, we upgrade them to a 16 ounce cup. So it's a little bit bigger, obviously. That's a four ounce cup. This is a 16 ounce cup. They make these with vented lids. And that way the humidity escapes. And so this cup here has 20 caterpillars in it. And as you can see, the caterpillars are starting to grow. And that guy is actually already in, that might even be fourth instar. So I have to now upgrade this container this cup into a larger container. These are um, eight quart containers that I just bought. And I wanted to show you guys kind of what I'm doing with this. Well, first let me show you the ones that are already set up. So here we have, these are Cosmosoma myrodora. These are very small little moths that I was raising. 
And I had about 20 caterpillars in here and the caterpillars are small enough where 20 caterpillars fit very easily in a container like this. Let me see if I can find any of these little fuzzy guys. These are the cocoons. They're starting to make their pupa. Um, let me see. All right, there's one. So the, the, the caterpillars don't get any bigger than this. That's as big as they get. So, um, you can easily fit 20 caterpillars of this size, there's a few more, in a little container like this. This one's or only a six quart container, okay? And now they're starting to pupate. I'll just let them go ahead and finish pupating and I might even just let them finish out their little lives in this container, we'll see. I might need it for some of the butterflies I'm raising, all right? But you wanna make sure, guys, that you have enough room for the, the caterpillars to move around in, in, in your container. There's enough room for host plant. You're putting enough biomass in the container that it's gonna keep the larvae fed well for at least a day. But you don't wanna overstuff the container because if there's too much biomass of uh, larval host plant, then the, the container starts to get too wet because there's too much water that's being sucked up through the water picks and uh, aspiring through the leaves. And so when that happens, the container sweats and when there's too much humidity, the caterpillars get virus and they die. And so you don't want that to happen. You need to control and regulate your humidity in your containers. It's very, very important all the way from the egg stage, all the way up through the pupa stage. If there's too much humidity, then your pupa and or your 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 eggs, your caterpillars, your pupa will virus. That's a it's a too much humidity is a breeding ground for virus, and you don't want that to happen. So you have to regulate your your humidity. You've got to make sure that you're not getting too much condensation. We got a little condensation building up here. Um, that's okay because we, you know, it's not crazy. It's not like dripping down the sides. And we're going to go ahead and clean that today and wipe that down and get rid of that extra excess condensation. I actually have, instead of a water pick in this container, I actually have a cup full of water because this grass that's that these caterpillars are eating takes up so much water that I, it, it, it would suck the water pick dry too quickly. So I just put a big old cup, poke some holes in the lid pop the water in there and you don't have to worry about it. But that means that you're going to have more water condensation. So you gotta be on top of it so your caterpillars don't virus. Very important, very, very important, okay? So uh, one of the things that we do when uh, we have these containers, in fact, I went and bought these eight quart containers today and we've got our lids and they snap shut nice and tight, but it, if you snap these lids on nice and tight, these lids are going to prevent any airflow from coming in and out, and that'll prevent your container from being able to alleviate itself of, of excess humidity. So what I always do is I always get a few lids and I cut little holes in the lids like this, and I cut a piece of screen, and then I simply get some hot glue and glue the screening onto the lid so the caterpillars can't escape. So what if a container is sweating too much and getting too much condensation, what I can do is I can just say, ah, I'm done with the solid lid. I'll, I'll put this vented lid on top and that will keep, that will allow the, the air to flow through. Now, I also like to have clear containers some people we use the white containers or different colored boxes and you know but the problem is you can't see what's going on inside a lot of times it's good to see what's happening inside of your container before you open the lid like if there's a butterfly pupa or caterpillar in j position making its chrysalis on the lid of the container and you open it while it's in that gentle fragile state it, it could actually jar free and you damage the, the the chrysalis before it ever even forms and the caterpillar dies. So you don't want to do that. So it, it's very helpful to see inside of your container. So that's why I get containers that are clear or see-through. 
It's very important. Uh, also, you need to make sure that there is enough humidity inside the container that your plants don't dry out. Uh, these grasses, the reason I have a, a solid lid with no vent on with these, this grass is the grass, if it's left in the air conditioning inside, and there's, it's going to dry out so fast and your caterpillars won't want to eat it. So it has to stay very um, moist. You got to keep it humid enough where it won't dry out. So you got to just keep checking. Every species that you rear is going to be different. Every time you have a new species, you're going to have a new things to think about. Um, guys, you have to gauge. Don't try to put too many caterpillars in a sing single container. You know, if you have, if you're trying to raise a whole bunch of stuff, you might have to get multiple containers. I'm actually, these question mark butterflies, I've actually got four cups with 20 question marks. I'm going to put them in four different containers and I'll, they'll probably outgrow these. So I'm probably going to need to buy bigger containers. I'm actually going to go get some 18 quart containers to be able to house enough it's going to be big enough to have 20 caterpillars in it. So guys, I uh, hope you like this video. Did give you some pointers as to what type of containers to use when breeding butterflies indoors. Uh, it's a lot of work, but if you have, um, you know, the right size containers and you're thinking the right way, you're, you're gauging and you're regulating your humidity, you're not jamming too much biomass in a container. Uh, you're making sure your host plant is fresh and in water. Uh, you're going to have success in breeding butterflies and moths. So, guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That helps out a lot. Don't Give me a comment down below if you have any suggestions on what container sizes you would use when breeding butterflies. So, guys, take care. Uh, let's breed some butterflies, and let's get out there and enjoy South Florida and our butterfly and moth friends. Take care now.